What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Pro Cyclist as we continue with our first Grand Tour at the Giro. And we failed to win a stage on a personal level in the first week of the race, although we did lead out Anthony Turgi to victory, but we have plenty more opportunities suiting us today, starting with stage 10. The Tour de Resto climb features heavily and that is where hopefully we can make some kind of winning move. Stage 11, stage 12 as well. Um, which, like I said in the previous episode, this was won by Jonathan Narvaez in real life. A fairly similar rider to myself, I would say. So hopefully we can do something there. Stage 13 even, we have some hills. So we definitely have plenty of opportunities in today's video. And that starts with stage 10. The Tour Sorreso climb is the decisive factor. Colbrelli, Baroncini and Tij Benut are the favourites. All right, so progressing nicely through the stage, we do have eight riders in the breakaway, including a rider from our squad. I don't think Maldonado is good enough today to win the stage, so hopefully they are reeled in. And here we go then. We have 37k to go. Coming onto the Colonella climb, I've got some riders coming to the front. Hopefully they will relay very, very quickly. Donovan is right there. Rosetto as well. And we're going to make this race really, really difficult. And now Antonita G comes to the front of the climb, getting blocked off a little there uh, by Damien Touze. But we are really pressing on and only only Terji is left to support us. This stage is going to be so tough. We're going to blow it up. And just like that, we have 48 riders or so left in the peloton already. Down to 39. I can't believe how tough we have made this race already. And we still have a lot of climbing to go. All right, we're approaching the Tortoreso climb. And Tij Benut, Jonathan Narvaez, Davide Ballerini all looking to make a move. And to be honest, Anthony Terji is now struggling. And I think he's pretty much cooked here. We need to try and follow ourselves because we are out of teammates and Navias he has a minor lead already. Scalmosa in the white jersey, beautiful white jersey for Trek Segafredo. He is starting to struggle. We're down to 20 three riders and the Tortoretto is approaching. Oh my word, Miguel Angel Lopez in the pink jersey is behind. The pink jersey has been dropped. This is big. And so the Tortoretto climb does begin. Now Vias kicks again. We have Yates, Colbrelli, Uran, Tom de Moulin, Tij Benu all here. But we are going to try and slowly work our way up the climb. Well, not slowly, but we're not going to try any major moves. We're going to try and set a steady rhythm and try to stay to the front. We can maybe try and attack, but Yates is setting a lightning tempo right now. And there he goes. Adam Yates on the attack. We need to try and follow. So over the top, Adam Yates does have a minor lead. And we have 7k to go in this stage. The Mulan Colbrelli. And to be fair, quite a large group are still on our tail. But Yates, he is gone currently. So 4k to go. There is Yates. He does have a lead. I'm sitting on the wheel of Sonny Colbrelli. I think surely he is the man to beat from this group. And Colbrelli starting to do some of the work himself. Lawrence De Plus. Oh my god. PCM, what is going on here? Because Lawrence De Plus is bringing in his teammate. He's leading me out, to be honest with you. We're going to stay on his wheel and kick into the final kilometre. Can Adam Yates hold us off? Sonny Colbrelli, myself, Parapentra as well. But I think Adam Yates is just about going to win the stage. So De Plus's tactical brain was definitely broken there. Uh, luckily for him, Adam Yates did manage to win the stage. Only fourth for us. It's not too bad, to be fair. But what else was broken was Miguel Angel Lopez's legs. The pink jersey is now the former pink jersey. He's down to 14th place. And things you love to see, Mikel Landa in pink. A stage for the sprinters again today, though, in Romini. All right, then, just 9K to go. The breakaway have inevitably been reeled in. And we get a nice plus five day here. Could we just maybe cause a surprise? And I have found myself in a great early position. Trek Segafredo here. Baroncini ready to lead out Mads Pedersen. I am on Danny Van Poppel's wheel, though. Malia is following us as well. Only 3K to go. And Trek have gone way too early. And now Skelmosa is coming to the front. I am just going to stay in this position though on Danny Van Poppel's wheel. And hopefully our good race day can help us try to conserve some energy before the final kilometre. Let's try and get a little bit of a jump on these guys if we can. Can we use our acceleration to our advantage? No, we cannot. And Tim Malia is going to win in Romini. And I think we're going to get a pretty solid fifth place. All right, that's a fourth and a fifth place so far today. And that does now leave us in a very promising third place 
in the Chiclamino jersey. We're, of course, 10th place in the KOM jersey, but it's very close there. Remember, we're aiming for a top five in both competitions, and if we can get one jersey, that'd be awesome. Now, this is the stage I think I've been looking forward to the most. 208 kilometers, so many hills, so many KOM points available. I think I'd like to join the breakaway and try and take the stage win that way. But you know what? I've actually been given full control of my team today, so I think what I'm instead going to do is try and control on the front early, not let a big breakaway go, and then try and hammer it early on in the stage to make this as difficult as we can. I'm not sure if our mountain stat is even up to this stage. It is really, really tough. So the current gap to a small full rider breakaway is just over two minutes and we have plenty of firepower still in our squad to control things. It's all going well. So this is all still going very well. We just have two riders left, or sorry, three riders left. Rudy Millard seems to be the strongest from that group, but we're still well in control of the race. But we are losing some of the early KOM points. And we do have some KOM points available here, so I will sweep those up and put my team to the front of proceedings again up to 35 now that was a big haul of points right there and I mean 97k to go we're down to 77 riders in this group I think I may try an attack soon to be honest with you guys so I think maybe 2k to go right now one final pull by Anthony Terji he can maybe catapult us towards Rudy Millard and they go we're off the front of the race and we are now I guess in the breakaway. But nope, this isn't going to work. They're not going to allow us clear. We did pick up some more KOM points. Rudy Millard has taken the lead of that jersey. We're fourth place and we have just 42 riders now in the peloton. It's very, very select. So again, we have a group. It's a strange group, mainly of GC contenders, but we do have some other riders here too. Terji is now done. We have 6k to go in this climb. Let's try and make a move and maybe form another breakaway because Ghana, he looks cooks. But no, again, we're not allowed to do that. We will be allowed, I think, to roll across the line first at the Pugliano climb. Let's see uh, how many points we accumulate. It should be 14 more in our chase for the KOM jersey and we're moving into that jersey as things stand. But after all that, it looks like the stage will end in some kind of mass sprint. We have 74 riders here somehow. I think even Caleb Ewan is still in this group. He is. How has he done that? Anyway, I think Anthony Terji can do the job today of leading us out, or at least trying to position ourselves in a decent position. We have a couple of big moves here. Ballerini and Cobrelli trying to go a little earlier. Can't see Caleb Ewan or any of the sprinters for the moment. Let's go up to 99. Terji can probably kick at 1.2k and we can follow into the final kilometer can we finish in the top five today but i think davide ballerini is going to win the stage just about ahead of doria godon and we get another top five i can't help but wonder what would have happened if we joined the breakaway today but nonetheless a successful day we move into the kom jersey stage 13 does look quite interesting on paper but i really can't see this ending in anything other than a mass sprint. And there it is, the Malia at Zera on our shoulders. Let's try and hold it until the end of the race, shall we? However, now entering the Monte San Bartolo, I do wonder if it is worth pressing on. Malia and Caleb Ewan have shown how strong they are on the hills and the climbs so far at the Giro, but we have to try and test them. So Stefani Rosetto has been doing God's work on the climbs, making this as difficult as possible. But Caleb Ewan, his second or third wheel just after the climb is crested. The man is a joke. All right then, into the final 5K. We are setting up another sprint. This time it's Taji leading myself out and hopefully we can make another step towards that Chiclamino jersey as well as the KOM jersey here today because Caleb Ewan has gone very early and surely too early. We're getting blocked in just a little, but Taji now leading us into a great position in the final kilometers. We do have a couple corners though, probably going to put pay to our chances. Baroncini at the front. Here comes Gaviria and Fernando Gaviria is going to win the stage ahead of Tim Malia. Toji finishes well and we are going to finish in around 10th place. Let's see. And it is indeed 10th place. So following that sprint stage, we have a 37 point deficit to Caleb Ewan. Ballerini up to fourth. Of course, Malia 
splits myself and Caleb Ewan. The key thing is neither of these guys can ride mountains at all. So we have to try and target the intermediate sprints after mountains if we want to beat those guys. Also, KOM Jersey were still leading. But now a stage we're definitely not going to win. It's Ghana territory or maybe even Rowan Dennis territory. It's a 32 kilometer time trial. And well, we finish our TC in the blue jersey still in 112th position so far. And it did end up being Ghana land today. He wins by a comfortable 42 seconds and it ended up being a short stay in pink for Mikel Lander. He's down to fifth with Danny Martinez moving into pink and we have a one two three right now for the Ineos Grenadiers absurd stuff and yes I did just finish 156th on a stage time trialing's not a forte but now it is time for the Pianca Vallo and the other GC teams definitely need to attack Danny Martinez and the Ineos Grenadiers they are dominating this race for us though we need to try and collect some KOM points and I'm definitely targeting that intermediate sprint in Neveros. So I'm currently trying to join the day's break where I can, I can see Felix Groschartner here. He's 10th in the GC. And if riders like him are trying to join the group, I can't see it being allowed clear. And you can see, there you go, the Ineos Grenadiers chasing it down. It's going to be quite hard work. And well, it's been a really tough chase to join today's breakaway. Currently just five riders here. We have Banute, Rudy Millard, Palanque. A few of them are done. We've dropped a couple of other riders who were in this group as well. Cataneo is one of those guys. It has been such a difficult start just to get in the breakaway. And well, we are the strongest rider in the breakaway at this time. The breakaway chasing hard. Of course, it's still Ghana at the front of the group, but up the road, we are going to take first place at the first climb today, defending our Maglia at Zura perfectly for the moment. And still with the only rider at the front, Tij Benut trying to chase us down. And we have two and a half minutes on the peloton still, believe it or not, led by Pippo at Ghana. We are going to, I think, Cross the line first here and collect 32 more points in the KOM jersey. I'm hoping to hold on, as I alluded to earlier, for that intermediate sprint as well, though. That could be more tricky. And here we go. The 32 points are in the bag. I wonder if it's now worth setting up. I think we just try and hold on until that intermediate. Let's do it. So luckily, I have now been joined by the powerful Bernoutes, and we are going to hold on until the intermediate sprint. This stage is going just to plan for the moment. Even more so as Benut simply lets us have all of the points. And we're going to hold off the Pelton at the next climb as well. But Tij Benut, importantly, the stronger climber and growing into this stage as it goes on has dropped us. But we do have three minutes on the pink jersey group. And so we enter the foot of the Pianca Vallo at the front of the race. Benut attacks. He is stronger than us today on the mountains. And he is going after the stage victory. Can he? Hold off the peloton though. Although we are going to slowly work our way back to Benut's wheel and just try and sit on for as long as we can. And there he goes. Not long at all. David De La Cruz has attacked, I think, from the pink jersey group. And he has gained such an advantage and is now seeking Tij Benut. But look at the Ineos Grenadiers. They're controlling this race. So we have been caught by the peloton. But one man who will not be caught today is David De La Cruz. He attacks early on the final climb. No initial response and he takes the win for Astana. What a win. He's five minutes down in the GC. Maybe this makes him a contender though. He has a massive gap over the chasing pack. It's almost a minute. It's over a minute to Danny Martinez in the pink jersey. And with that, the end to another very successful episode for us. Another very successful episode though for Danny Martinez. He is dominating the Giro as things stand. Miguel Angel Lopez really has faded away. Um, and I think Lawrence de Puss has a little as well today, which means he does surrender his position on the podium to Emmerich Mas. But the Ineos Grenadiers still in a 1-2 position entering the final week of the race. Now we sit 60 seconds in the GC, but we are now third place in the Chiclamino jersey and we're dominating the Malia at Zura as well. It would be awesome if we can hold on and win that jersey on our first Grand Tour start, wouldn't it? And we are still seeking our first Grand Tour stage victory and could 
Stage 16, Beware It finally arrives. On paper, the stage looks like it suits us. It may be our best chance remaining because plenty of high mountain stages, a sprint stage as well. It really is our final chance to get that stage win. But of course, we have that blue jersey to defend as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Smash that like button down below if you did. Hit subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next one.